The world is arming itself for the final battle. Two trillion dollars are spent each year on weapons that kill. Humans have possessed so much power to destroy lives at no other time in history. Many agree that we are preparing for the last battle that will transform the reality we know. And according to Jewish prophecy, Israel will be at the center of this enormous conflict many known as Armageddon. Today many people fear the future due to the unstable situation around the world. All you need to do today is turn on the news to understand that things are getting hectic around the world. And so, in today's episode, I would like to present a biblical perspective on the final conflict known as Armageddon. But before I do that, please do not forget to subscribe and hit that notification button to be informed about new episodes on Israel My Channel. So let's begin! During this year Jewish holiday of Hanukkah, the United Nations General Assembly approved a resolution voting 129 to 11 votes that disavowed Jewish ties to the Temple Mount and called it solely by its Muslim name of Al-Haram el-Sharif. 129 countries agreed that Jewish people have no connection to the Temple Mount and this site belongs exclusively to Muslims. Now, I am not sure if that was done on purpose, but remember what Hanukkah is all about. It is a memory of the historical reclaiming of the temple by the Jewish people from the oppressing pagan rulers. Therefore, this UN resolution is a clear insult to all Jewish people. But to tell you the truth, this is nothing new. If not for the strong opposition from the United States, Israel would long ago be a target of aggression from almost every country in the world. Israel does not have many friends and it seems that the big brother, which the United States have always been, is getting distracted and involved in other regions of the world. The US total and reckless evacuation from Afghanistan is a clear sign that their priorities have changed. Today, the Pacific is the key for the United States and not the Middle East as it once was. Israel is a tiny nation and does not have much land at all. If we look at the world map, you can hardly spot that country. Just look at this map. Israel is surrounded by huge countries with much larger populations and land than the Jewish nation. Also, remember that all the countries surrounding Israel are Muslim and have a common religion. Israel is the only country in Near East where Islam is not the majority religion. Since the creation of the Jewish state, Israel has been attacked many times by its neighbors. We have seen several military miracles that prevented the destruction of the resurrected to life nation. Of course, don't get me wrong, Israel is not a perfect nation, but everything needs a perspective. Why does the majority of humanity so hate this tiny nation? Is it that horrible? I would argue that no other country receives so much negative attention as Israel. No other people have been hated so universally and experienced multiple extermination attempts. All we need to do is look at history. Pharaoh in ancient Egypt, Haman in Persia, Antiochus IV Epiphanes of Greece, Tiberius of Rome, Inquisitions and Crusaders in the Christendom, pogroms of the Russian Empire, Hitler in Nazi Germany, Stalin in the Soviet Union, Al Khamenei of Iran, United Nations and UNESCO are all examples of the ongoing hostility towards the Jewish people. And let me share with you something personal. Only in Israel and perhaps America 
Do I feel safe to say that I am Jewish and not fear that someone will mistreat me? People may have answers to why the Jewish people are hated, but I promise to give you a biblical perspective, and so I will. The Bible is clear that Israel is God's chosen nation. In Deuteronomy 14.2 we read, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God, and the Lord hath chosen thee to be a peculiar people unto himself, above all the nations that are upon the earth. Being chosen is a very controversial thing for the Jewish people. Actually, many Jewish people will joke that they wish that they were not chosen and would happily give that chosenness away if it would mean that it would spare them all the persecutions they receive. Whether you are Jewish or Christian, one thing we can agree on is that if we treat the scriptures in a literal way, the Messiah is coming to Israel. Christians believe it will be the second time. Most Jewish people think the first time. But if we analyze the biblical text, we will realize that Israel is chosen for an extraordinary mission given to them by God. The Jewish scriptures, the Bible, predicts that the Messiah will come from the Jewish people and restore humanity to the Edenic reality. This plan of restoration will, however, have significant opposition. The examples of anti-Semitism I shared with you witness this ancient hatred embedded in people's heart not belonging to God. According to the Jewish prophets, this conflict between the people of God and the nations will result in the final confrontation known as Armageddon. Nations of the earth under the satanic influence and authority are pictured in their rebellion against God and against his anointed Messiah in Psalm 2 verses 1 and 3. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. To bring judgment on these rebellious nations, they will be drawn into the land of Israel for judgment. In the book of Daniel, chapter 11, verse 40, we read about the king of the south. And at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind, with chariots, and with horsemen, and with many ships, and he shall enter into the countries, and shall overflow and pass over. This is to be understood as the Arab nations under the leadership of Egypt, verses 6 and 7. Then they will be immediately joined by the king of the north, verse 40. What is interesting is that this nation will be coming from the farthest north, Ezekiel 38:15. If we look at the map today, the country that is farthest north to Israel is of course Russia. Moscow, the capital of Russia, is in a straight line down from Israel. Ezekiel's prophecy became extremely relevant when Russia joined Syria's 10-year conflict in September 2015, when the Syrian military appeared close to collapse and Russia since then helped tipping the balance of power whose forces are now in control of much of the country. Hundreds of Russian troops are now deployed across Syria and they also have a military airbase along Syria's Mediterranean coast. Syria, of course, is a dire enemy of Israel, and it is in Syria and Lebanon that Hezbollah is deploying thousands of rockets targeting the Jewish cities. Hezbollah, just to remind you, is a military group that is controlled by Iran, which in fact is the her of the ancient Persian Empire. What is not clear yet is how Egypt will join the war against Israel, but 
despite the active peace treaty between Egypt and Israel, it is not a secret that the Egyptian government is no friend of the Jewish people. The initial confrontation will be horrible in consequences because the land of Israel will be destroyed by the enemy's forces. We read that in Zechariah 13.8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. However, God will save the Jewish people by a judgment from heaven in the same way that the ancient cities of Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed with fire and brimstone. Ezekiel 38, 22. And I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood, and I will rain upon him and upon his banks, and upon the many people that are with him, an overflowing rain and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. After destroying the king of the north and the king of the south, a certain political ruler will move into Jerusalem and claim the city as the center of his one world government, religion and one world economy. We read about that in Daniel 11.45. The tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore, he shall go forth with great fury to destroy, and utterly to make away many. And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas in the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end, and none shall help him. Some Christians see this time as the second half of the tribulation period. At the end of this horrific period of time, this ruler, which is identified by Christians as the Antichrist, will be joined by the kings from the east and gathered together to make war against the rider on the horse and his army. Revelation 1919. In Revelation 1911, we read And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. This will be the time of gathering the nations that will be judged because of their persecution of Israel. In Joel 3.2 we read, I will also gather all nations, and will bring them down into the valley of Jehoshaphat, and will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage Israel, whom they have scattered among the nations and parted my land. What I find interesting is that God will judge people for partition of his land. Israel has been divided into territories and the United Nations continue to condemn Israel for building on the land given to them by God. The famous battle known as Armageddon is not an isolated single event, but rather a campaign that extends over the last half of the tribulation period. We know this because the Bible provides several locations for the battles. Of course, the most known location is the hill of Megiddo, located west to the Jordan River, some 10 miles south of Nazareth. Armageddon is nothing more than an English pronunciation of two Hebrew words, Har meaning mountain and Megiddo meaning Mount of the Governor. The Mount of Megiddo in northern Israel is not actually a mountain, but a tell, a mount or hill created by many generations of people living and rebuilding on the same spot, on which Asian forts were built to guard the Via Maris, an ancient trade route linking Egypt with the northern empires of Syria, Anatolia and Mesopotamia. Megiddo was therefore the location of various ancient battles and as scripture informs us, it is here where one of the final battles will also be fought. However, we also read that battles will be fought in the valley of Jehoshaphat, Joel 3.2, 
and the Valley of the Passengers, Ezekiel 39.11. Additionally, Isaiah 34 and 63 picture the Lord coming from Edom and Idumea, south of Jerusalem, when he returns from the judgment. In fact, Jerusalem itself is seen as the center of the conflict in Zechariah 12 and 14. The many battles are in agreement with the words of Ezekiel, who says that the invaders will cover the land, Ezekiel 38, 9 and 16. The campaign against Israel ends when the Son of Man, the promised Messiah, appears as the rider on a white horse in the heavens, claiming his victory over opposition towards God and his chosen people. The famous scene from the Lord of the Rings, the two towers, certainly was inspired by the description in Revelation 19.11. In a similar matter, the evil forces represented in Tolkien's saga as orcs are destroyed. This time will be a crucial point for human history, where the promised Messiah will come in the darkest hour to save his people and usher in the kingdom of God on earth. Finally, Israel will have a king who will be just and transform Jerusalem into an international center where people will pilgrim to worship the only true God. But that's a story for another episode. In the meantime, if you found this video helpful, Please do not forget to subscribe and hit that notification button to be informed about new episodes on Israel My Channel. You can also support this channel by clicking the join button on the main page of Israel My Channel. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Shalom.